Hello everyone, and this is Alice the Dragon here in Delver, and uh, I'm gonna keep it a hundred with you. Uh, this is actually a redub because I messed up the audio settings, but uh, here we are in Sewer 2, and uh, I was going to uh, continue my lecture series, so I figure why not just uh, you know pretend I'm still playing the game and. Uh, and uh, you know, ramble on about uh, my topic for today. Uh, of course, the uh, lecture series, Life, the Universe, and Everything. So far, we've covered how, you know, the way the way I view it, uh, pretty much every uh, every representation of the universe can be portrayed somehow in fiction. Yeah, you know, the the uh, the accuracy you know could be argued but uh, anyway i want to tell you about my favorite piece of fiction and uh, i'm not talking about the big lebowski i may be a dudist but uh, yeah there there are other pieces that i would say are more significant ooh we got a guy over there uh, aim fire no anyway uh, Boom, got it. So, there are things that may be, you know, there, you know, there, there are pieces of fiction that are more important to me, um, and the one that I would say is my favorite in terms of just, you know, being able to look at the universe and say, what do we have here? So, one over zero is a a uh, small four panel web comic which um yeah it 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 seems very simple it is drawn in black and white the creator himself admits that it's you know not the most artistic of web comics out there yeah his style does improve over time at you know same with all web comic artists but what makes 1 over 0 significant and uh I would highly suggest at this point that you just pause the video and you go to undefined.net slash one slash zero and read it for yourself. It's only a thousand strips, so you can blow right through it in yeah you know, in an hour or two if you're a quick quick reader. Uh, I've read the entire archives through yeah you know, a, a couple of times yeah. You know, I like three to five times I'm pretty sure and um, it's yeah you know, because it's so simple yeah you know, it's just a horizon and the characters yeah you know, the first the first character who comes in is uh, Barnacle Jones who's you know literally stolen from another webcomic and uh, and, and and at first it's just yeah him talking to the creator of the webcomic now you know any any universe in which uh, yeah the the characters can either talk to or acknowledge the creator you know we we would say um yeah it doesn't have a fourth wall and uh yeah the in so the fourth wall kind of becomes its own element in one over zero, but yeah, the, there's also this uh, this one argument that one of the characters has with uh, the author Tailstake, and uh, and he's like, well, you know, do we really exist? And you know, they kind of go around in circles, They're like, uh, oh, you know, the, you could say you exist uh, in that you're one of Tailstake's multiple personalities. <laughs> And Tailstick actually replied, "That's that's only if I'm certified." <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that ice wand just will not do mu that much damage, does it? You know, it's it's just kind of like the ice wands are definitely more of a stunning thing, as is that uh, mace right there. Although I think I like the uh, mace's uh, stun thing anyway. I get so much stuff in this game. I like. This is as far the furthest I've ever gotten uh, in Delver 
and so that that's uh kind of makes it really exciting actually just you know just because you guys get to witness it my longest run ever or at least so far and uh yeah while i get to talk about things that i find interesting such as one over zero <laughs> Uh, yeah, my, my favorite character in the whole game is, uh, mo most of his life he's called Ganny the Ghost, and that's, and that's, um, uh, essentially who he is by, by the time he gets to the end, but, yeah, he is the, the molecule taken out of an eyeball, uh, it, you know, one of the characters who's an eyeball, taken out of, um, uh, yeah, Ribby the Rib, who was taken out of Barnacle Jones in an Eden routine. Yeah, what do you expect me to make out of bone? <laughs> that, that's probably not a, a an accurate quote, but it's a paraphrase. And uh, like, yeah, he yeah he he's the one who who's just like, you know, do we do we exist? And. Uh, so, you know, his answer, you know, he's, he's based on philosophers. You know, his answer is essentially, you know, what is, you know, like, once we, once we argue that, uh, yeah, that even though we experience continuity, that doesn't necessarily mean that we exist between frames or, um, or, uh, or exist at all. Um, and then he goes, but your existence is being pro brought into question by these arguments. You know, for what is man but a fiction of God? And, you know, that moment in, you know, in the story really blew me away because, because it's just like, you know, uh, you know, is, is, does fiction exist? Like, and and there there are actually um, I I I have heard that uh, there ooh well wow, watch out 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 get them get them get them okay okay we're good <laughs> yeah I could still have fun ah soothing soothing water mm, yum all right so let's see where yeah you know, where were we I I lost my train of thought there uh. Yeah, you know, since our reality can be brought into question in in that way, and there and there are plenty of other works of fish, fiction that have questioned uh, whether reality exists. There are things like The Matrix, which just about everybody has heard about. Um, yeah, there you know, th yeah, think things like um, Sucker Punch. If if you've ever um, ever uh watch sucker, sucker punch you'll you'll know what i mean uh if you haven't watched sucker punch like it's a rough ride <laughs> but it's a ride uh i wouldn't i wouldn't recommend it for the faint of heart but uh, i would recommend it for uh, uh people with morbid curiosity like myself <laughs> uh and yeah you know, it, it's almost a trope at this point and yeah, you know, a lot of you know, sociologically speaking, a lot of things that uh, you find that in in fiction that are tropes uh, are things that also kind yeah you know, also happen uh, you know to a significant n number in uh, in reality in everyday life you know it is in you know some some. Yeah, there's also the uh, saying "truth is stranger than fiction." Well, yeah, you know, what if what if truth is our universe, and and fiction is just the other universes that could be out there? And yeah, you know, with the uncertainty principle of yeah, you know, like there's there's so much that we don't know. Well. With, you know, with, with, with so much, the like, that was a very close shot there. Uh, oh, those traps will get you. Uh, like, you, you, you kind of have to, uh, 
you just kind of have to wonder like a lot of, yeah a lot of stuff i cover is just yeah you, you just have to wonder like that that that's actually kind of a cop out isn't it <laughs> ooh i leveled up nice uh health defense agility i forget what i picked here probably agi probably agility yeah agility okay <clears throat> yeah i needed to move faster i was like i might have been wanting to tank it but i was still going pretty slow bats are annoying okay could have just shot it there while it was slowed, but or uh, complete uh, frozen. I mean, ah. Well, yeah, I'm like I'm still talking about uh, one over zero. So like, and uh, there there's also these very sweet moments, you know, between the characters that uh, yeah it, you know towards the towards the end of it where they're just like we know that this comic strip is going to stop at a thousand we know which comic strip we are on we can see the impending end and tailstake had a had a really interesting ending uh spoilers ahead guys <laughs> like all of this is spoilers ahead pretty much um yeah don't say i didn't warn you um uh, we we uh, Tailstake had a great way to end it. And you know he he kind of he kind of went you know it, I I would say it was a very tranquil ending. You know what what he what he does first is he brings back all the characters that had died uh over uh, over the course of a thousand strips, yeah, uh, there were there were quite a few, <clears throat> and uh, and then and then and then you also have, uh, yeah, it, it, you know, the, the characters were given uh, new bodies to be humans, and then there was this uh, door, and he's like, okay, I'm I'm putting you in a place on Earth. Just yeah, you know, with all the things you've always wanted, uh, yeah, and uh, and you're going to be human beings. <laughs> so it's uh, yeah, it, it's it's both you know what what I would uh to to quote uh, Ganny, uh, at at this point with you know in, he was referring to the phrase happily ever after, it, it, but. I would say uh, this this one applies too. Uh, isn't it a ru running start at a kind of crystallization? Um, because you know, what what is happily ever after? Happily ever after is as far as you can imagine. <laughs> like you know, you are like you as a reader are free to imagine whatever the characters went on to do. And uh, and 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 that and that kind of thing, I think. Uh, I don't know. It's not something I would do for my characters. Uh, it was uh, it was quite interesting uh, to see them grapple with that kind of concept. Um, but yeah, you know, for me, yeah, you know, especially after. Uh, watching the the whole uh, yeah the good place, yeah. After uh, watching that, I'm uh, I'm just like, well, yeah. I don't I don't think I would uh, want to uh, live indefinitely. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. Every yeah every book has a beginning, a middle, and an end. Yeah, every story has a beginning, a middle, and an end. Like in in my mind, you know, a, a a life isn't as fulfilling if you don't acknowledge that it's a scarcity. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah, you know, just yeah, you know, just like in Delver here, 
Like, you know that you are going to die at some point, but you can be proud of how far you've come since you first set out on the journey. So, you know, in a way, death, death is something to celebrate because, you know, it gives you a deadline, I suppose. You know, you, you ever... Uh, you ever have something you want to do for yourself, but you just kind of put it off and put it off and put it off and put it off. And then uh, somebody says, you need to do this by next week. Or you say you need to do this by next week. Sure. You know, even if it's something you want to do, you, you know, you're going to get it done quicker, aren't you? Yeah, because, you know, there's, there's a deadline. And... Uh, yeah, that's that's something that's really been driving me as of late. Uh, you know, it, it, in case uh, you didn't uh, hear the news, uh, I uh, I am no longer at the custo custodial job, but I have uh, landed myself a gig as a uh, gaming uh, news writer. So that's going to be quite a lot of fun. Um, you can check my Steam if you want to find links of uh stuff to my articles uh so yeah good stuff you know but but back to you know one over zero and it's you know perspectives on the universe you know there there's uh yeah there's uh one one thing that that happens when uh yeah, so so there's this uh, one character, Marcus, who's a molecule, and uh, and he, uh, yeah, he he uh, you know tries to build a golem. Yeah, you know, at that point there's there's one golem in the uh, in the universe, uh, and he's a yeah you know, a grass a grass man wo woven out of. Uh, uh, grass that uh, grew out of a bear. Uh, yeah, really, you should uh, you should read it if you aren't reading it or have read it already. <laughs> uh, and and um, so the uh, quote unquote evil character Junior. Um, yeah, well, yeah, Marcus uh, put together essentially a pile of rocks, and he's like, oh. Uh, uh, Let's let's turn let's turn this guy into uh, into a golem, yeah. You know, and Tailstakes like, well, he's just gonna fall over as soon as he tries to move. So Marcus is just like, oh, I'll get some mud. So he walks off, and uh, and Junior comes over, and he's like, hey, hey, hey. and uh, he and yeah, you, know, you don't see it, uh, yeah. But you know, between that and the next day's strip. Um, you know, the pile of rocks is tipped over and Junior is just like tail tail stake uh you know made, made him you know fall over. He destroyed he destroyed your son. And it's like he he wasn't your son yet. He you know, he was a golem, he didn't have life yet. And um uh, and Marcus is just so infuriated like and and, and caught up. Um he gives himself a personal fourth wall and uh turns out how how it works you know he is, uh he gets little sparkly fours in the corners of his eyes and uh and he's just like who is this tail stake person you guys keep talking about i don't know who this is i don't hear what you're hearing yeah i don't i think you're all crazy and uh and and uh you know there there are characters protesting like hey you know you're you're turning this into a religious argument <laughs> uh, and uh yeah you know, like being being able to kind of uh, flex um flex stuff like that is is fun uh, but anyway, you know, Marcus does eventually make himself a uh, golem child. 
and uh you know he is uh he ends up being based on um what the characters descriptions of what p tail state could potentially look like uh, i'm going i'm going the wrong direction aren't i oh nope nope it's over there anyway um uh, ooh arrow um uh, yeah, it's ba yeah, this uh this new golem is based on the descriptions of all the characters of what Tailstake maybe probably looks like. And um and uh the uh the characters aim yeah, he he yeah, the golem does um yeah, does come to life um and his name uh happens to be Mock. Uh yeah, in the in the context of yeah, I am I am not going to um uh, let you continue this with uh, this mock tail steak. Yeah, so he he wakes up thinking his name is Tail Steak. Uh even though yeah, the first word that a uh, in this universe a uh, golem hears uh is uh, their true name. And you know, he does he he doesn't um uh, he has the fourth wall as well. Uh and not only that, he has none of the knowledge of the outside world that Marcus br briefly had access to. Um, and yeah, I, you know, after a few strips of you know of nonsense and and whatever, he's just like, wait a minute, like, yeah, I'm I'm gonna question this. So he. Uh, yeah, he asks everybody, yeah, you know, how many days are in a year? Yeah, you know, this this was, uh, you know, the the existence of years was based on uh, uh, the April Fool's comic strip, which is definitely a thing. I love flaming bats, by the way. I love that that's a thing in this game. Uh woo! Gotta gotta get it. Come on, headshot. Yeah, there we go. Hmm. Feels good, man. Feels good. Um, so, so, uh, yeah, Ma uh, Mock is go going around asking everybody how many days are in a year. Yeah, and everybody's like, oh, yes, uh, three, 365 days. Yeah, uh, Junior's like, 300 something days. <laughs> 360 something days. Uh, not accurate at all. Um, uh, Ganny's answer is, uh, three, 365 and a quarter. Because yeah, you know, his his is obviously the uh, most uh, accurate because you, you have leap years, um, <laughs> which yeah, fun stuff. So, uh, so where 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 do I want to go next? I'm getting distracted by zombies and caterpillar. Get out of here, caterpillar, and and I guess he's orc, like not a zombie, but you know, you know what I mean. Did I get the gold? I hope I did. I really hope I did. So, uh, so mocktail steak <laughs> is just like, hold on, everybody. Everybody's giving me the same answer. I don't think, you know, they've had time to just kind of agree with each other that, uh, you know, that that's a thing. And, and, uh, yeah, let's let's have a trial and actually get this settled. And uh it's actually a a, a really well done debate. I don't know if uh I don't know if Tailstake has uh uh done you know done research into philosophy or uh or whether that's uh just an interest of his or maybe it was just for the character because uh well yeah, you know, like like he said, you know, you know, Manny slash Ganny was uh, was kind of based on romantic philosophers. Ouch! Actually, that I don't think that took any hit points. Yay! Get it. All right. Like I always have that little victory thrust. You ever notice that I have that little? Hey, I got it. Yeah. You know, thrust the sword <laughs> or swing the mace <laughs> uh, and uh, 
in the end, the argument is uh, for removing the personal fourth wall is, well, there seems to be an advantage to you know, not having the fourth wall. You know, if, if you don't have a fourth wall, you, you, uh, uh, you get access to knowledge like, um, I don't know, which, which, which Mariah Carey album just dropped. <laughs> uh or something like that you know it's like or or uh what's the tallest mountain on earth you know like you know not having a fourth wall means that you know common knowledge stuff um uh, at least in in this universe and uh that is yeah you know, that you know that is basically uh what that uh, what that devolves into ouch ouch get out of here stupid bat ah okay ooh ouchy 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 um yeah uh, man are there any other great moments in uh in one over zero that i want to talk about ooh ooh uh yeah, the, the you know the uh, the fact that the characters are in so simple of a world, you know, makes it so that you know their conversations are really the drivers of the story. So I think that's why it's such a you know great uh, great way for uh, uh, for for uh, yeah, just. It's 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 a great way to um, just get ideas out. I is I think is what I'm I'm trying to say, because you know when you know the more you have to describe, the longer the story takes. Yeah, you know, that's that's one thing I've noticed in um, writing. Yeah, you know, at, at least as as a hobby. Yeah, you know, because you know, obviously, the the more complicated a setting is, the more you have to describe. I tend to lean towards you know fairly complicated settings, and it's refreshing to see yeah you know, how a um, simple uh, yeah you know, a a a, a, a simple universe as as it were. Am I gonna? Swap, swap that out. I have so many weapons that I don't need. Why am I carrying so many weapons? Ah, whatever. <laughs> I guess I gotta protect myself somehow. And they do break over time, so that's that's kind of a thing. Yeah, I I I, I like the uh, you know the simple universe of uh, one over zero. A lot because uh, you know it 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 gives you a lot to work with while being a little. <laughs> that probably makes no sense. Ah, well, uh, maybe this is a, a good place to stop. Actually, so I will. Uh, See you all in the next episode. I hope you enjoyed this lecture on life, the universe, and everything. I will see you later. Bye!